Uh, okay, welcome to the Bookmap platform details. The risk disclaimer. Uh, trading equities and futures involves substantial risk of loss, is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not indicative of future results. For more information, go to bookmap.com. If you are in trial or are a member, uh, then you have access to a lot of free resources, and you can always reach out to us at support at bookmap.com. Uh, let's see here. So I want to show you where you can find Bookmap. Uh, it's here. Uh, you might want to watch these intro videos here just to get a feel for what Bookmap is all about. And then let's click on the pricing tab. Uh, this is where you can find Bookmap, and this is where you can uh, get your 14-day trial period. So subscribe here. There's two different versions, the basic and advanced. And the difference between the two are the add-ons and the ability to trade from the chart. Now, there's also the uh, basic and advanced here with DX feed. It's just a package with a, a data feed and the data feed is only for US equities. It's not for uh, futures, okay? And you can get a, a, a trial of that as well. Now the trial is for delayed uh, futures um, equities data. So if uh, you're looking for live uh, equities data, then you will have to purchase it and it's $59 a month, okay? You can get it with the base and get it advanced as well, okay? You don't have to get the package, all right? Uh, for more information on the latest on Bookmap, go to uh, our Twitter account and you can follow us there. Or you can subscribe as well um, to our YouTube page. And uh, any uh, videos that are uploaded, you will uh, you can get an alert uh, and um, uh, know exactly when, uh, when those are uploaded. All right. Okay. Uh, if you're new, uh, then I would suggest starting with some of the features and components videos here. Uh, maybe watch a couple of the order flow video snippets, but this is more of the uh, kind of uh, understanding how to use Bookmap within your trading. Uh, and we get more into this in the advanced uh, analysis webinars. Uh, we also have an educational course here, and then the uh, recorded webinars are here. Okay. All right. So let's jump in and take a look at Bookmap and what are we looking at? Okay, let's take a look at the ES and uh, we can see the uh, the sell off here uh, in the ES. Uh, and um, uh, just going to um, start off with the basics, okay? Because uh, for for some of the uh, newer traders in here, uh, we need to go through this, all right? And uh, actually, I can see quite a, quite a few uh, uh, newer traders in here and. Uh, so welcome to the webinar, uh, and uh, let me show you uh, what Bookmap is all about and what is it uh, uh, displaying here, okay? So we're just going to go through this. We go through it every day. It's just a simple um, uh, exercise. Uh, we're looking at here uh, a five-minute candlestick chart, okay? And um, most of us are very familiar with the candlestick chart, open, high, low, close of a five-minute period, all right? It's that's all you get in that candlestick chart, though. Okay, we do have a sub chart here in volume that can be helpful, but uh, the issue here uh, is that um, uh, you know we're making financial decisions based on open, high, low, close. That's the only four data points that we have. Okay, and uh, that makes reading the uh, the buying pressure that you can see down here with the wicks. It makes it kind of nebulous. Uh, we really don't know where the volume is taking place, and that's a problem. Okay, we want to know where the volume and transactions took place, what type, was it aggressive buying or aggressive selling, uh, and where it took place and how much. Okay, that is all missing from this chart, as well as understanding uh, where uh, traders are lining up to bid and offer. Okay, so let me uh, start to turn on layers of data here and I'm just going to start with the historical best bid and offer and and uh, we're just going to zoom in so the red line okay, we have two lines here okay the red line is the uh, historical best offer and the green is a historical best bid okay so this wick here uh, is uh, this price action here pretty pretty uh, actually this is um, not not bad uh, information on the wick because um, we don't really have any uh, uh, sort of it's a very quick move down and a quick move back up okay now this is where we're starting to get some uh, interesting data here that's really not in the candlestick chart uh, and that is this um, uh, little um, uh, uh, sideways uh, consolidation layer here 
uh, and then we get a retest of it here, and then uh, and then we break to the upside. Okay, so uh, you know we're we're starting to uh, understand what makes up this candlestick chart just with the historical best bid and offer. Uh, but if I turn on the volume, okay, now we have a complete picture of where the trading action is taking place. Okay, you you can see the um, uh, the red dot here is a uh, an aggressive market sell order, and a green dot is an aggressive market buy. Now <laughs> it's displayed here in a in a pie display, just to give you the overall um, uh, feeling of the volume at this area, and the size obviously means a lot of volume. So let's just zoom into this area here, and you'll notice I'm going to click on the hand tool, hover over this, and you can just zoom in very very quickly with your uh, center mouse wheel. Okay. And as I zoom in here, uh, I start to break apart uh, that pie display into all the various elements uh, in each specific event. In fact, I can continue to zoom in here and continue and break apart all of these trades. And I can see exactly what took place here. You know, we're down at bil uh, millions of seconds at microsecond level here. All right. This is what unfolded. Right, and we can see that uh, some mechanical algorithmic action here uh, taking place uh, in some of the trading, and uh, that's uh, that's how these markets uh, trade. Uh, there is a lot of uh, robots are trading back and forth. Okay, now as I zoom out, okay, note how um, all of these trades uh, get visually and just visually uh, consolidated or aggregated into a bigger dot. And that's how we'll display the volume. Okay, so you can see uh, green dot here. Uh, this is an aggressive market buy order. Red dot is an aggressive market sell. And that's how uh, we uh, uh, define our volume. Okay, as a zoom out, uh, and you can see that so many trades took place in here that we're giving you still the overall. So the majority of this move to the downside is the majority is selling. Okay, and a little bit of buying, and then here it's actually pretty flat. Okay, it's uh, both buying and selling. Okay. Okay, so that is the uh, traded volume. Now, that's good. Uh, and uh, let's go back to the current market and take a look here. Um, and you can see the five-minute candlestick is is forming uh, in in real time here. All right. So um, the uh, it's good to know where the transactions take place. However. Uh, and that is traditional tape reading. But the problem here is that um, uh, we still don't know where traders uh, lined up to buy and sell. And usually what we do for that is we go to the dome. Okay? And we look at the liquidity here. Uh, and uh, we're looking at these price levels to see where traders are lining up to buy and sell in this marketplace. This is your level two data. Here's your depth of market on the offer and your depth on the bid. And uh, right here is your inside level one data, your best bid and offer, okay? It's reflected in this window right here as well. This, uh, the dashed green and red is your best bid and offer, and this number is the last traded volume. All right, so now, it's good to, to note uh, and have an idea where these high levels of liquidity are, where majority of the sellers and buyers are. Okay, we can see here at 57, uh, pretty high liquidity, uh, 1369 uh, in 70 in, in terms of contracts there. Uh, and then, um, uh, you know, down here at, uh, at 52, we see uh, 1100 contracts, all right? So we, we have an idea uh, where uh, uh, traders are lining up and providing liquidity. Uh, and that's helpful. Problem is with a dome, uh, and this is your dome in Bookmap. Uh, the um, the problem here is that uh, we don't. Once these numbers change, and they're changing constantly, uh, it's it's um, uh, that that information is lost. That previous information is lost. It's been updated, and we have no uh, record uh, of what uh, this auction looked like previously. Okay, you'd have to remember it, uh, and uh, you'd have to remember the time, uh, the liquidity, what about areas around it, uh, and um, and how long it stayed here. Okay, and you'd have to do the same thing here on the on the uh, bid side. Now, uh, what we do though in Bookmap is we give this liquidity a graphical representation in the heat map. 
Okay, so that high liquidity here is given this graphical representation. It's very bright. It means it's high liquidity. If it starts to get darker, or you know, darker shade of gray, you can see it's less liquidity. So these numbers line up to match uh, the graphical representation, and, and vice versa. Okay, so now we know. Now we know where that high liquidity is, and that's in the current market window. Okay, now you'll see them pulling uh, liquidity, and you'll see the uh, heat map. Will uh, will change uh, to um, uh, reflect that uh, uh, pulling of liquidity or adding of liquidity. Now, where it gets interesting here is we take this data and we project it onto the chart. So now you can see the adding and pulling of liquidity within these striations here. Okay, it's on the chart historically. So now we understand uh, where traders were lining up previously, how much in relationship to price as it's coming up toward them. Uh, and now we can start to gauge the intent of these traders. We can start to use this limit order book uh, to our advantage, okay? So let's zoom out a little bit and I'll show you what I mean, okay? And uh, you can see that the historical heat map starts to change a little bit uh, based on all of the liquidity that's here in the book, okay? So uh, we can change the uh, uh, contrast configurations here and brighten it up a little bit, uh, uh, you know, uh, play play around with uh, some of the black and white cutoff, and a ask me questions here about some of this if uh, uh, you'd, you'd like to know some uh, some more details. But um, it's in the user manual, which you can find uh, up here under help, and then uh, user guide. All right. But uh, these webinars are, are for for you guys to answer or to answer your questions uh, that uh, that you have about the platform and get into some of the details here. Okay, so now we can start to gauge uh, the intent of these traders here and look how they pulled that liquidity at the last minute. All right. So did they really want to trade up here? And the answer is no. Okay, they pulled. Okay, 57 at 2457. They stayed in the book for a bit. Okay, guys down here at the same moment uh, and probably the same player at 54 and 53 pulled. Uh, and um, and that now you can see that shade of gray. Uh, it got a little darker here. Okay, so we are channeling now uh, between areas of high liquidity around um, uh, the, the closest here is 54 and then uh, 50, 57 here. Okay, so a three point range, which is, you know, pretty narrow, narrow range in the uh, S&P. Um, I don't know, maybe, maybe kind of average, uh, four, four point range now, I guess, um, you know, some, something like, that, uh, five point range. I don't know. We, we see a change all the time. Uh, and, um, uh, anyway, uh, that is, uh, something that you can now use to your advantage. Okay. Uh, you can start to gauge, uh, you know, if they stayed in the book. Uh, if they got filled in some of these areas, uh, and and the the key here uh, to understanding the liquidity is is just like understanding the traded volume, okay, and your volume profiles. We're not looking at one single line of liquidity to give us insight. We're looking at overall context of an area, okay. If you just see one big volume dot here, uh, you know it it, it it's helpful. Uh, you know, it, it may have, have significance, uh, but um, uh, we want to know about uh, kind of the buildup to that uh, area and, and how it reacted afterwards. That's what gives us the context to that traded volume, okay? Uh, and it's the same here with liquidity. We want, it, we want to uh, treat it that way. We want to understand uh, the context of it, okay? So, for example, uh, this guy here pulling... Uh, is is showing kind of bearish behavior because uh, he doesn't really want to be a seller here, uh, and um, uh, it looks like maybe he's pulling and adding up here uh, at 57 and a half, and maybe here at 57 as well, right? So it's he's less aggressive. It's further away from the the best bid and offer, all right? And we can read that context, okay? But these guys at 57 so far are staying in the book, right? Uh, now, we will really know when price comes up and tests them, okay? Look at the aggression coming in now at 56, okay? That just popped into the book, all right? And this this will um, 
uh, start to uh, give us some, some insight here to the differences between shorter term high liquidity and longer term high liquidity. Okay, this just popped in. Okay, so and we can see how the auction here reacted immediately to it. And let's zoom in a little bit more. As soon as they popped in, we see we see price move down. Okay, it skewed the auction. Okay, this is similar to all of a sudden uh, more supply jumps into the auction. Okay, uh, if it's uh, uh, you know you go to the farmer's market and then all of a sudden someone shows up with uh, a truckload more of uh, of vegetables for sale. Okay, and here here's another example right now. Okay, so now this this uh, we see this kind of activity all the time. All right now this could be potential spoof. Uh, you know if what if they they skew the book and we can see you know high liquidity here. It skews the auction, and then what if they jump out? Okay, there will be a vacuum. Price can come right back up. Okay, or do they stay in here? Do they really mean business? Okay, or do they say enough is enough? I want to be a seller here at these lower areas, and uh, I'm going to get a deal here. In fact, now they're starting to chase. All right. Okay, so. Uh, we can uh, start to uh, gauge the context of the auction uh, and uh, and read the order flow here, okay? And we'll be doing it the same way using the same skills. Just it's 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 going to be kind of a flip in the in the in your mindset though, uh, understanding liquidity compared to understanding the transactions and the volume, okay? But uh, it's it's the context that we're looking for, all right? So now. Uh, you can see that that candlestick chart uh, is lacking quite a bit of uh, uh, understanding, uh, quite a bit of data here, and uh, and Bookmap has uh, uh, sh is showing us here a lot of transparency into the market, really where they're where they're interested in trading, uh, and where they're actually transacting, uh, and the type of uh, the context of the auction, as well as the type or the context of the um, of the transactions. All right. Okay. Now uh, we can start to put this all together uh, into uh, you know understanding um, some very simple uh, technical analysis. Uh, you could read your candle patterns in, into this as well. There's, I don't I have any any sort of uh, uh, issue with the candles uh, at all, as long as they're put into the right context. Right. So, you know, for example, we're trading now below down down below this uh, uh, these two candles here or three candles. Right. Uh, and uh, if what I'm looking for then, OK, based on these candles uh, is uh, I'm looking for the volume. OK, I, I want to see more transactions take place down here. OK, that's going to give me a lot of insight to my candlestick patterns. Okay. And then uh, I'm also looking for the auction. What's it going to be telling me? Okay. Well, these guys now look at the the interest here at at lower levels here. Okay. Uh, you know here at uh, at 55 and a half, and uh, and they were here earlier at 56, and they're they're still kind of uh, showing up uh, at 56. Okay. All right. So now I, I've got something. Look for looking for pullbacks. Uh, and uh, you know, if you're looking at your candlestick pattern on your higher time frames, then this now you've got the transparency into that candlestick. You can understand it, right? If you're looking for that, then you would be going short here. Okay, you'd be looking for buying, or I'm sorry, selling on pullbacks. Okay, and now we have a lot more information to support that decision. Okay. So I um, uh, hope that is helpful, uh, you know, giving a, a reference and context uh, to a, a bigger picture here. Now, you can you can look at uh, all sorts of things here. Uh, you know, you can uh, you can start to draw your trend lines. Uh, you know, maybe you're looking for uh, uh, this this range here to stick. But, you know, here we have a trend line at, at 53. Okay. Well, maybe uh, maybe there'll be buyers down here, and indeed there are. They're lining up at 53. Okay. So if you went short here, maybe you'd want to take some profit down at this area. 
Okay, if you remain longer term bearish, well, then maybe you'd want to let it run and, and maybe you're looking for getting some more on up in this area. Okay, it's it's there's all sorts of ways to play this. Okay, uh, and um, uh, but uh, the, the market uh, is being recorded and it all the data is here in front of us. All right. So, um, you know, we, we can uh, we can also look at uh, some horizontal lines here. Okay, I, I, I like both the trend lines and the horizontal lines uh, quite a bit. Okay, you know, here's our breakdown. Actually, the breakdown, you know, we even have a microstructure up here, as we can see, okay, in this little area here, and we see the breakdown, okay? We don't even get a, a retest back to that area. We get a retest back to, let me stop that so you can see my, my uh, mouse. You can see the uh, uh, little um, uh, swing to the low here, uh, and that's where we, uh, we basically get our, our, um, our retest here. Okay, uh, so kind of back into that area. Okay, we don't even get back into this area up here uh, where it broke from from this little microstructure up here. But now we're starting to get a lot more context uh, and um, it gives us uh, a lot more insight to uh, this, this price action. Okay, because uh, we have, you know, structures within structures here. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is uh, the fundamentals of... Uh, uh, you know, starting to understand uh, fractal market uh, behavior. All right, so uh, these moves start with uh, these uh, the smaller moves, and then uh, and then within a bigger move as well. Okay, so we got a pullback to the bigger move, but we didn't get it back to the uh, smaller move up here. All right. Any questions? Okay, this kind of analysis here. Uh, is, um, uh, you know, what we start to get into, um, uh, well, in, in about uh, four or four or five minutes here, uh, in, into deeper analysis of uh, what to look for uh, with in, in how, how to uh, start to apply this uh, to uh, your trading. Uh, and, um, uh, and that's in the advanced webinar, okay? But uh, th this webinar here is about the platform and the details uh, going through um, uh, some of the functionalities here, okay, like, you know, there's drawing tools, right, uh, and uh, you can clear them all off here as well, uh, and, um, you know, there we go, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, jumping back and forth between uh, different symbols, or if you want, like, for example, here on the NASDAQ, we can double click on this, and I can pop this out, and uh, I have uh, a sub or another chart that I can put on a different monitor, okay, of the NASDAQ. Okay, if I close that down, uh, it'll, it'll pop back in uh, here at the uh, end of my uh, line, and I can left-click, hold, and drag that back into place over here. All right. And then, uh, you know, if you want, uh, for example, let's look at the ES, and uh, let's throw the NASDAQ on there. Okay, and we have all sorts of, um, and let's take the candles off for now. Uh, and let's put on the correlation tracker. Okay. And I'm going to add a correlation of, uh, hmm. Yeah, let's, let's put the NASDAQ on. What the heck? Okay. Whoops, and I need to enable it here. Okay, it's going to be a blue line. And I need to turn on my indicators. Okay. And where's my NASDAQ? Okay, what else am I doing here? Hmm. It should do it. it. Should do the trick. Okay. All right. I don't know what I'm doing wrong here, but um, anyway. Uh, 
Let's try that one more time with that uh, correlation. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> okay, I, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I don't know why it's not showing up. Um, anyway, uh, the uh, the correlations do exist, and you can. Uh, this comes with the advanced uh, advanced features, uh, and uh, that that's part of the um, uh, package that you get. Um, so uh, that is uh, uh, part of the uh, advanced uh, subscription that you that you get. Okay, and you can see these numbers here. These little numbers here is another one. It's another add-on indicator, which is the um, uh, iceberg detector, uh, showing liquidity that traded that wasn't uh, displayed in the limit order book at that moment. Uh, so uh, uh, that's uh, that's another one, and and the ability to trade right on the chart too. Uh, is another nice one, okay? Okay, so now, uh, you know, you, you can see how we read this here and we can see the uh, the move here to the downside. Um, and, um, you know, it's, it's giving us, uh, you know, we read this pretty nicely, um, you know, looking for uh, uh, a pullback into uh, some of these areas and then looking for that continuation to the downside. Now, here's my NASDAQ right here, okay? It's, it's showing up, but um, that is odd. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> that's funny okay well it, it's it's on there somewhere but uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, maybe I triggered something wrong anyway uh, let me know if you have any questions uh, other than that um, uh, we'll we can see you over in the um, uh, the advanced uh, webinar uh, and um, uh, let's see um, Joan uh, we'll, we'll get you up and running here uh, so uh, you know I, I, I let the guys in support know uh, already, so uh, they they should be uh, should be helping you already, okay, okay, yeah, you're welcome, uh, okay, uh, well, thanks for coming. Uh, we will uh, catch up with you guys tomorrow, okay, bye bye.